Welcome to the Stroke Cast. A Generation X stroke survivor explores rehab, recovery, the frontiers of neuroscience, and how to peel a banana with one hand. Hello, I'm Bill Monroe, and welcome to episode 12 of Stroke Cast. This week, I'm going to talk about the Amazon Echo and stroke recovery. This past summer, I got an Amazon Echo because, well, it was cool and I wanted a new toy. I apparently wasn't alone because more than 30 million people have gone ahead and purchased an Echo device over the last couple of years. That's just 30 million in the United States alone. It's kind of amazing to see that kind of rapid adoption of new technology. And when it's that many people that quickly, you know it's not just the techno geeks, it's uh, normal people too. So how do I use this thing? Lots of ways. But uh, one example is uh, on days when I get up early, I ask the Echo to give me my flash briefing. So while I sit there and take my pills and eat my honeycombs, I hear Jimmy Fallon's monologue from The Tonight Show, uh, the latest headlines from Reuters News, highlights from recent episodes that have appeared on the Twit Podcast Network, the management tip of the day from the Harvard Business Review, and the weather. And then I head out for my meetings or my appointments or to go catch Pokemon. This week's episode is going to be all about the Echo for a couple of reasons. Now, first of all, I do want to give you a word of warning. Because I am going to be talking about the Echo, I am going to use the A word a lot. So if you already have an Echo and it can hear this podcast while uh, while I'm talking, be aware, it may start activating. So with that warning, let's talk about Alexa. We're going to talk about what the Echo is. And we're going to talk about how the Echo can help stroke survivors and caregivers. And finally, we're going to talk about how you can get StrokeCast every week on Amazon's Echo device. If you don't already have an Echo and think you might want to pick one up, you can just head on over to StrokeCast.com slash Alexa to find them on Amazon via my affiliate link. So, first of all, what is the Echo? Uh, the Echo, which is also known as Alexa, is a smart speaker made by Amazon. It's not the only smart speaker in the market. Uh, Microsoft and Apple have recently brought their own to market. And Google has their home assistant smart speaker, which is probably Amazon's biggest competitor in the space. Amazon has several versions of this device, but they all work pretty much the same way. A lot of the differences have to do with size and quality of the speaker. Uh, but basically, it is a speaker and a microphone that is connected to the internet. You ask it questions and you get answers. It can also perform other tasks like uh, play music, uh, start videos on your TV, hundreds or thousands of different things. You control it with your voice. These, this device is always listening for that magic word, Alexa. And when it hears you say, Alexa, it wakes up and starts paying attention to you. You do also have the uh, option to go ahead and change that if you want. So it can actually respond to Amazon or it can respond to Echo or it can just respond to computer. I actually switched mine off to respond to computer instead so I can act like I'm on the Enterprise, which is great until I happen to be watching an episode of Star Trek in the same room as the device and uh, my Echo starts answering Geordi LaForge's requests. But as I said, there are thousands of uses for this thing. I'm going to talk about 10 of them today that are particularly relevant to stroke survivors and caregivers. Those 10 are calendar management, medication reminders, Timers, remember this, shopping lists, audiobooks, phone calls, ask my buddy, meditation and mindfulness, and home automation. So that's a lot of different functions, so let's get to it. Uh, I'll start off with the calendar. I keep all of my calendars and all of my appointments in Outlook. Uh, you could also do this with Apple's calendar software, or you could do it with Google's calendar programs as well. 
I have my calendar connected to my Echo through its app. What that means is I can say, Alexa, what's on my schedule tomorrow? And then the Echo will go ahead and read all of my appointments that I have tomorrow. I can do this for any particular day, ask what's going on later in the afternoon, ask what's happening today, and all of that. And it goes ahead and pulls that information right out of my calendar for me. It's great because this lets me easily keep track of all of my PT and OT appointments, support group meetings, doctor visits, various other meetings, etc. I like it because I can get an easy overview of my day in advance. Plus, my girlfriend Kathy can go ahead and check it too. She can just go ahead and ask Alexa what's on the calendar. It's a great way to go ahead and prep a day from the evening before. So before I go to bed, I can ask what's on my calendar, get an overview of what's going to be happening the next day so that I can mentally prepare myself or, or take care of any last minute logistics like printing out that form I knew I was supposed to print out before. The second way to use the Echo device is as a medication reminder. Post-stroke, many survivors end up on a plentiful assortment of vitamins and prescriptions in order to, well, you know, make sure we keep living and recovering and things like that. But you have to remember to take them or they don't do any good. So I can say, Alexa, remind me to take my baclofen every day at 10 a.m. And then every day at 10 o'clock, Alexa will speak up and tell me to take my pill. If forgetting to take medication is an issue for someone, this can be a big help. A caregiver could even set it up for a survivor or a survivor can set it up for themselves so that they get those regular reminders every day of when they should take their medication. You can also always set up one-time reminders like, Alexa, remind me to call the doctor's office at 2 p.m. on Wednesday. And then at 2 p.m. on Wednesday, you'll get that reminder. The third way to use it is for simple timers. A lot of times when we make coffee in my apartment, uh, girlfriend and I will go ahead and have coffee from the French press. Once you add water to the French press, you have to wait four minutes and then your coffee is done. So what we'll do is we'll set a timer for that and say, Alexa, set a coffee timer for four minutes. And then four minutes later, Alexa will pipe up, give us a little beep and let us know that our coffee timer has just run out of time. And that tells us then we can go ahead and finish the process. The timer function is great, not only for coffee, but also if things like your exercise regime includes time tasks. So, for example, do you do 30 minutes a day on a stationary bike or 15 minutes a day with a mirror box to work on a hand? The Echo can go ahead and keep track of that for you. You can even run multiple timers at once and the Echo will tell you which one is going off. And this is great because it tells you exactly which one of those timers is done, even while the others keep running. A fourth use for the Echo device is the remember this function. And this is great if you find yourself forgetting the trivia of life. I can say things like, Alexa, remember that I put my keys in the bedroom. Or, Alexa, remember that my insurance card is in the desk drawer. Or, Alexa, remember that John wears an extra large t-shirt. Or, Alexa, remember that Kathy's favorite color is blue. Or, Alexa, Remember that hand shot first. When I need this information later on, I can simply say, Alexa, what's Kathy's favorite color again? Or Alexa, where did I put my keys? And it will give me back that information that I previously told to remember. The next way to use the Echo device is with shopping in a couple of different ways. First, in many ways, the Echo device is optimized for shopping on Amazon because ultimately Amazon wants you buying more stuff from Amazon. And this can be especially helpful for anyone with mobility challenges because I could just say, Alexa, order more toilet paper. And it will go ahead and place an order for my preferred brand and quantity and have it shipped straight to my apartment. 
With this simple functionality, it means I don't have to leave if I don't want to or if I'm not able to. But it goes beyond that too. And beyond shopping on Amazon, Alexa also supports shopping lists. So I can say something like, Alexa, add coriander to my shopping list. Now, one of the things about the Echo device is that it has a companion app that you download and install on your smartphone. So this app is another way that I can control the Alexa, get into all the settings, do all sorts of really fancy things. But what's really cool is that when I told Alexa to add that coriander to the shopping list, it also updated the shopping list on my phone. So now if I go shopping, I have my full shopping list with everything I told Alexa to add to that. And if Kathy goes shopping instead, she can see the same list, the things that I added to it and the things that she added to it. And in fact, while she's out in the grocery store, if I decide there's something else we need, I can go ahead and say, Alexa, add waffles to my shopping list. And it will update in real time. And when she comes back, we will have awesome waffles. Another way to use the Echo device is with audiobooks. And of course, this is probably no surprise. Amazon got their start selling books online. They also own Audible, the largest audiobook company in the world. And Audible has hundreds of thousands of audiobooks in their library. After Stroke, reading a physical book can become more challenging. Holding a book and turning a page can be tough when you have only one functional hand. If you have visual or language processing impairments, that can make reading ink on paper a lot harder as well. Plus, plenty of non-stroke folk just prefer to listen to their books anyway rather than physically read them. Audible subscribers can listen to their audiobooks on the Echo. Just ask Alexa to read the book and you're free to listen as you move around your home. The Echo is also a great communication tool. It can make phone calls and send text messages. So you could say, Alexa, call 650-825-5847 and Alexa will start dialing. Then you can have a hands-free conversation without having to deal with a headset, its cords, batteries, all of that fun stuff. It also works with the contact information that you may already have on your phone. So I could say, Alexa, call mom and it will call my mother. Now, this is great for anyone who may have trouble holding a phone, manipulating a headset, or dialing the small buttons on a phone. Another really cool thing about it is that you don't even need to use the phone system. If you have a friend or a relative or somebody else who has an Echo device, you can call their Echo directly from your Echo to get even better sounds in the conversation. And you can be sitting on your couch and they can be sitting on their couch and you can just be chilling across the country. The eighth use of the Echo that I want to talk about is a skill called Ask My Buddy. Skills are new talents or tasks or things that the Echo learns how to do. There are thousands of software developers out there who don't work for Amazon and are just writing their own skills for the Echo that you can then get through the companion app for the Echo. So with this particular skill, once you enable it and set it up, you give it emergency contact information. The idea is that if you have a problem, you can simply say, Alexa, ask my buddy for help. And then Alexa will call your emergency contact, will send a text message, will send an email so that your contact knows that they need to check up on you. And this can be great because if you have a fall or start to have another stroke or, or something else goes wrong where you're going to need assistance and you don't have your phone with you, you can alert somebody to the situation and they can take the appropriate action. The ninth use I want to touch on is about meditation and mindfulness. There's been a lot more research happening in recent years regarding hypertension, stress, and other conditions and how to treat them with guided meditation or with relaxation exercises or meditation. And there are dozens of skills available for the Echo devices that provide those guided meditations. 
you can look through the selection, you can pick your favorite, and then whenever you want to sit down and go through your meditation or your mindfulness exercise, just ask Alexa to run your favorite and just relax. And finally, we get to number 10, and that is home automation. Now, that is a big concept, and it seems like it could get really complex, and it can, but we don't have to talk about Jetson's level of home automation here for it to be really helpful. Instead of focusing on things like thermostats and electronic door locks and cameras and automatic drapes, let's let's keep it simple and just talk about lights. There are these special light bulbs that can actually talk to Alexa. I have some of these installed in my bedroom now, and they are pretty awesome. I can simply say, Alexa, turn the bedroom lights off. I could even set these light bulbs to different colors, different brightness, put them on a timer, and etc. But, you know, that simple ability is really nice to have. And this is great, again, for anybody with mobility challenges who might struggle to walk across a room or struggle with a switch or even with just depending how furniture and stuff is set up. For example, in my bedroom, the light switch is nowhere near my pillow. What that means is that when I go to bed, I either have to turn off the lights and then walk in the dark to the bed uh, and climb in, or I can leave the lights on and walk to the bed in the light and then climb in and then sleep with the lights on. And those are all certainly doable options, but they're not really desirable. With the Echo, I can have the lights on, I can walk over to the bed, climb in, pull up my blankets and say, Alexa, turn the bedroom lights off. And then I get to enjoy the dark. And if I need to get up in the middle of the night, I can again say, Alexa, turn the bedroom lights on and they will come back on. So I am less likely to trip as I wander about the house at three in the morning. There's some really simple, really cool things you can do with the home automation, even as basic as the lights. And it seems silly, but it is surprisingly useful. So why did I spend all this time talking about the Echo devices in this week's episode? Well, it's because StrokeCast now has its very own Alexa skill. So you can now go up to an Echo device and say, Alexa, enable StrokeCast. And then every week you can go up to your Echo and say, Alexa, play the latest episode of StrokeCast and have the latest episode fill the room. Go ahead and give it a try. So that's it for this week. I'm not doing a hack of the week this time because, well, really the whole episode was just a series of hacks related to the Echo. Do you have an Echo? What skills or uses do you find most interesting? Go ahead and let us know in the comments for this episode over at strokecast.com slash Alexa tips. If you need an Echo, go ahead and head on over to strokecast.com slash Alexa. And of course, go ahead and enable Strokecast on any Echo that you may have or any Echo that you may see. Sure, when you're visiting your friends, go ahead and enable Strokecast on their Echo devices. And then listen every week. And, of course, as always, don't get best, get better. Thanks a lot. I'm Bill Monroe. And I'll talk to you next week. The Stroke Cast, Bill Monroe, and Bill's guests provide general information and entertainment, not medical advice. Please do not make any changes to your treatment plan or the execution of your treatment plan without first consulting your personal doctor or medical team. The Stroke Cast is a proud production of the Currently Speaking Podcast Network. Thank you.